Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we should have a fun one on our hands. It's the Bills coming in at six and three going up against the Texans, who come in at 2-7. and seven. Well, Larry, no snow in the forecast, but the wind is whipping off Lake Erie and into New Era Field, just south of Buffalo, New York. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Houston Texans and the Buffalo Bills. The NFL season has hit high gear, and off we go in Week 11 on EA Sports. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. able to plow forward up to about the 29 just shy of the 30 it's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down tough running there that's a hard earn four yards yeah those are the unsung kind of runs they don't fill up the stat sheet but they do set you up in good position on second down able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. And to give this time to the tailback. And some space here. Room to run past midfield. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. 25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. the ground this is Lamar Miller and he'll be stopped up quickly here at the 38 just a yard on the first down carry so it's second and nine looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays yeah you took the words right out of my mouth so far four plays in this drive all four on the ground they'll try the air now with Watson Dumps it complete to Miller. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Call it a gain of three. And that'll lead here to a third down. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production. But I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. And that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. Flushed out right. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. It'll be a gain of six, and it'll be a second down. And they're getting him involved early. 
you feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved just as you said they want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game but they must like the matchups they're getting and he'll go down here at the 12 yard line they get five out of that one and it moves the chains well they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Here we go! Watson! A shotgun snap for Watson. And a catch right side by Evans. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball. And sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. To throw on second is Watson. Forced out to his left. His throw incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. It's been a pretty long opening drive. This will be play number 11 coming up on third down. From the gun, here's Watson. Buying time to his left. Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. Does the big boy have the juice? He's at the 50. And they will finally get him as he's all the way down near the 40-yard line. Always fun to watch a big boy pick it up and go. He may need a little oxygen on it. He may need a lot of oxygen on the sideline. Not only that, how about you and me trying to balance ourselves up here because <laughs> you can feel the shaking all the way up to the booth. That big guy trying to get it to the house. And this is one of those bang-bang plays, Charles. Did the knee hit first or did the ball come out first? This is where you need that 20-20 eyesight, don't you, Brandon? You've got to see which one happened first. If the knee hit the ground, then they will keep possession. And his kick is indeed good. And it's now 3-0, Texans. So they get the three points, they're on the board, but it took them three trips to the red zone just to get one field goal. So on the defensive side of the ball, you feel great about yourselves. Guess what? Three times and you only came out with three points. But on the offensive side, you have to finally feel a little bit of relief that you got some points on the board. Taylor on first down. He's got it. This is Ware. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. 14 yards, and the Bills will get a new set of downs. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. Ohio. Ohio. Flex round. Flex round. On, On first and 10, it's Taylor. Pass the 20. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. Usually hitting a deep post pattern, as we just saw there for a big gainer, that's tough to do because you usually have a safety or two in the middle of the field. But if you hit enough crossers and underneath routes and curls, you start to get those guys creeping up, wanting to make plays on the football. It's the equivalent of a changeup in baseball. You show your other stuff, throw the changeup, and on that play, it worked for big yardage. 
Second down following the run. Taylor firing quickly here and that's complete and he couldn't quite get there tackled down at the one the Bills passing game getting him down the field they've got another first down well, he did everything but get him in the end zone there but now they're set up golden opportunity strong opening drive and they're knocking on the door and the way that they did it now look where they are and he'll get in touchdown Buffalo a great effort there his ninth touchdown of the season, and the Bills have taken the early lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. The punter Kayser now out to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. And to be frank, they're just in a tough spot. It's only November, already eliminated from playoff contention. I know their fan base doesn't want to hear that, but that's the case. What are they fighting for now going forward? You know exactly what they're fighting for is that word that some people don't want to hear. <laughs> But it's pride. Draft. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to go draft, but pride's better, right? You know something? <laughs> You're right, because that's part of it, but that's two different mindsets. That's front off. Looking for Evans, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 28. And he is going to score. It's a pick six and a Bills touchdown. That was an interception, but on the field, the guys are picking it off. They're not saying that. What word are they using? It's Oski. And that means catch the ball and go the other way. That's your vernacular. I've never heard anybody say Oski. Ask around. They'll tell you. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. And they just had that pick six. I guess the only positive maybe of them returning that for a touchdown. This offense right back out onto the field to try to make up for it. I like that because now it doesn't give them a chance to go to the bench and really settle. You know, to sit there and kind of seethe over the idea that they turned the ball over previously. Right back out there. It's almost like hopping right back on the bike after falling over. See if they can get the ball moving again. Yeah, we'll see if they can do it here. On first down, Watson. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Evans. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. On second down, here's Watson. And this is Ertz with it, right side. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. On first and ten, Watson fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's Texans football as we get going. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Come on, let's go. To the air yet again, Watson. 
Under pressure here, and down he goes. Sack back at about the 43-yard line. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Gonna need something special here on third and long. After that sack, what does Watson have in his arsenal? Dancing to his left. He's going to run, but he's got a long way to go. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. First down, it's Watson. Flush to his right. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. Turns out to be a great idea to tuck that one. Good for 24 yards. Now, those are the ones that hurt defensively. You do everything right. Excellent pressure, good coverage downfield, and then he slips out the back door and turns it into a nice game. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain on that run. And while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. Let's go! Flex round! Flex round! Flex round! Flex round! Here's Watson now on second down. Eluding the pressure right. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Different pass rushes are designed for different things. Sometimes you want to keep the quarterback in the pocket. Sometimes you want him to flush. I don't know exactly how this one was designed, but they made sure they moved him to his right. He got out of the pocket. Unfortunately for him, he was hit as he tried to throw the ball, and that resulted in an incompletion. It's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine. And they need 10 yards out of it on third. Out of the gun, Watson being chased out left. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Snags it for the pick. And he is going to be stopped on the return at his own three-yard line. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. is their fullback. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. Taylor will throw, and incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. When they need to play on third down, you kind of know what direction the ball is going, but the defense knew it, too. Yeah, it's a good call because they wanted to put two men on him, and they did. Dare him to throw into double coverage. Really what you're saying is, let's see if one of your other receivers can beat us. And where will this be spotted? The side judge says it went out just across midfield. And now out comes Houston. And two interceptions thrown here in this first half. You hear it, no matter the sport, they say the great athletes, they can kind of have a short-term memory. But that's easier said than done. It is easier said than done. But I played with a guy who threw two interceptions in the first quarter of a really big game we were playing. Johnny Unitas? And no, not, not. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. 
I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Well, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool him, right? Tried to trick him, ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. Now it's Watson escaping the pressure right. Now he's going to throw it back deep over the middle. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. But well, we couldn't count in yardage on that one, didn't we? That was truly third in a mile, wasn't it? It was. I thought they might just go underneath, but they didn't. They wanted to get the first down there. Yeah, they tried to pick up the huge chunk unsuccessfully. I'm with you. I would have tried to take some yardage just to gain some field position. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And the Bills getting set to go. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. He couldn't get the edge there. It wasn't sealed, so maybe not all on the guy running the football all the time on those tosses and the pitches that go to the outside. No, not at all. I would agree with that totally because sometimes the defensive guys, they win the edge battle. And when they do that, there's no place for the running back to go, and especially for offensive linemen trying to get out ahead. With their footwork and speed, it was negligible on that play. No gain at all for the offense. Now Taylor, and he whips that one incomplete there. He kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. Yeah, he wasn't really going through progressions. He wanted to go to his top guy. You do that against this defense, they'll make you pay, won't they? Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the thrown football. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. here on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. A big play there. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Bills will add on to their lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. There aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. The punter, Kayser, now out to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. And here comes the Texans now. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. 
Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the... Ex and for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Tredavious White with a pick. He's at it again, Charles. He had the pick six last week. Not a pick six here, but an interception. And it's another Oski, because that's the word we use when we intercept the pass. Oski tells your team to rally around and block for you. Well, that worked really well last week because he had made it all the way to the end zone. This week, he got the Oski. Maybe not a touchdown, but boy, he's playing really well. And he'll give it here to his running back. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep a defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. As they run the counter play. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. He lost four there, and it's third down. Man, wasn't that long ago that the guy playing that spot was an outside linebacker type of a guy. Now, as a defensive end, how about the speed that he used to get into the backfield and make the play? Here's Taylor. And able to find Dorsett. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. Now it's Taylor. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Heard a coach talk about those late in the half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off the squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. The punter Kayser now out to kick it away. This is taken at his four. <laughs> and they'll be backed up to start this drive as he's taken down at about the 15. And now out comes Houston. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. In trouble here and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line, Leonard Williams. He's the one to get him, and that's sack number seven for him on the year. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. So we've come to halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be fielded at the six. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Out come the Bills now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively.
They'll run it now out of the gun. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 12 yards that time, and a Bills first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good Here philosophy go. at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Now a play fake here on first down. Flushed out right. They find some open field here. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll go down shy of 40 at the 41. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out. But a running game can really benefit your team right now. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. A handoff as they run the counter play. Room here to run. The 20. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. A great play there. His 10th touchdown of the season, second of the game. And the Bills continue to pour it on. able to up the lead by one more well we looked at each other right away we knew that flag was coming out and I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you I don't want to throw the flag but you caused the play you did it I had to and that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half they trail offense first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Throwing again is Watson. Caught by the tight end, Ertz. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. 40 yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Throwing on third down, Watson. And this is going to be incomplete. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Fielded at the 33. 35 yards that time on the punt. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Back onto the field now comes the Bills offense. And last time out, another touchdown. And I think there may be some empty seats around here by the time the fourth quarter comes around. Yeah, I have to agree with you because this one's just about decided. But you know who benefits from all those empty seats? You and me, trying to get to the airport. That's the roads would be fairly that, clear. That is one and he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. A great effort there. His third touchdown of the game, number 11 on the year. And the Bills head on. He keeps carrying the ball into the end zone. And in this one, he's sort of carrying the team on his back. He's the reason that they lead right now. No question about it. And you talk about on his back, he's not minding the extra weight at all, is he? Carrying that just as lightly as he does the football. Yeah, those, what a great performance so far. Those three touchdowns, it's got him in the lead. And now out comes Houston. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy 
who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. Here's Watson looking to throw on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. <laughs> Way easier said than done. Here's Watson. Flush to his right. The hook up on the right side to Hopkins. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. And take it right on the 30. It'll be a net of 40 yards there following a 43-yard punt. Three-yard return, and that will come the offense as they take over. They run the counter now on first down. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. So, Brandon, when this offense gathers together to watch tape for this game, they're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves until the coaches get upset about the play we just saw. But you know their defense is going to be. But we put up big points all game long. The defense is going to win one every now and then. Now they'll run it on the toss. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Only a yard on the gain there, and that'll set up third and 13. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. The Bills on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Taylor now off the bootleg. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Looking to throw on second down. Watson eluding the pressure. And he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back in his own three-yard line. My man, it's been a night for that offensive line and it's only getting rougher five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far it feels like the witching hour out here doesn't it okay stupid question what's the witching witching hour yeah the witching hour that's when everything goes haywire late at night facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone they need some cushion let's see what they can do on third down back to throw stafford escaping the pressure right Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Throwing back across his body. He's picked off just shy of midfield. And he is not quite going to make it all the way in. They'll mark him down right about the one-yard line. And that pick just sets him up beautifully right down near the goal line. 
I remember being in a defensive meeting back when I was in college. And he takes it in across the chalk for a Bills touchdown. A great play there. Punching it in from a yard away. And the Bills use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. The punter, Kayser, now out to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional <laughs> side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. Now it's Stafford. Flushed out right. That's incomplete. Nearly another pick. My goodness. The man's getting a little loose with the football there, right? Interception before, almost had one here. He's got to start taking better care of it. Yeah, really should have been back-to-back -back drives with interceptions. He's lucky there. Throwing on third down, Stafford. Evans, fast footwork over the middle to Evans. A good pick up there, a 22. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now a first down throw, Stafford. He couldn't quite hold it, got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. On second and 10, Stafford. That's incomplete, nearly another pick, my goodness. Oh, he just threw an interception last drive. Nearly another pick. But things aren't very even right now, are they? He's a little bit sloppy out there, isn't it? It's kind of different driving on those paved roads and those country roads that have those <laughs> potholes in them, isn't it? Because that's the way this game's going right now. A lot of bouncy bounce to it. You spent some time on some Tennessee country roads. I certainly have. Plenty of family back there. God love them. And he is down deep in a Buffalo territory. And that goes as a gain of 37 on third down. From the red zone now, Stafford. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Second down, here's Stafford. And this is going to be intercepted. Tredavious White with a pick. Back now in Buffalo. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. tackle but then quickly brought down but a nice little game eight yards on the pickup and now they'll have some options on second and short and after the play on the ground that brings up second down here time of the tailback and for one of the first times tonight he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage 
He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. The Bills on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and two. Off the bootleg. Taylor. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because they nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game instead. They're able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. Here's Drew Kayser now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. <laughs> Call it 46 yards on the punt, just a single yard on the return as he was covered quickly. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Flush to his right. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll check on his status when we return to Orchard Park. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. There'll be some contact going on. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. And partner, in a lot of short yardage situations, you'll see the linebackers step up into the gaps, what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, to make sure they take away all spaces, all creases. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off by Preston Brown, the linebacker. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage. They've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. Now they'll run it on the toss. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now they'll run it on the toss. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. The Bills on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and eight. Here we go! The throw is Taylor. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. 12 yards that time and a Bills first down. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take him to look like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. There's Perkins on first down. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. And they'll run it here. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. 
No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. Third and four. get him inside the red zone here down to about the 19. Just a yard on the run there and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. Well this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. And now this defense trying to use the clock to their advantage. They'll take the time out here with 2.08 left and then they'll have another stop coming up at the two minute warning. And Lambeau will put this one through. And that will just add three more to a lead that's already out of hand. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. Let's field it at the two. <laughs> And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Here we go. Now we'll play fake, and it's Watson. Eluding the pressure right. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time. And it'll bring up third down. Faking the give. Now Watson. He'll buy some time right. And this is Ertz with it. Right side. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. A big one there for the Texans. 18 yards. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson escaping the pressure right. And his throw is incomplete. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. now to throw again steps away to his left and incomplete there a nice hit jars the ball free and brings up third down another wayward pass you know things started out poorly in this game and to be frank they just really haven't gotten much better and all that does is embolden the secondary they feel good about what's going on and they just play better and better He's going to let it fly. And my goodness, another interception. Tredavious White with a pick. And that gives him now three interceptions in the game. Well, someone's locked into what they're trying to get done in the passing game. When was the last time we had someone get three in a, in a contest? 2011, wasn't it? Kurt Coleman. Oh, yeah, that's then right. with the Eagles. That's right. Then gets it with the Eagles. And I believe it was against Washington and Rex Grossman. That's correct. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Second down following the run. toss and he's going to be out of bounds up around the 45 yard line 11 yards and a buffalo first down 
Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And he'll get this across midfield to the 48. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with a lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that, plus three. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well, because... We've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. How about in the NFL? The miracle at the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything.